All right, everybody, welcome to VO Boys for Monday, October 16th. F it, it's a raw feed. We're doing it live. I'm Clayton. Yeah, I'm Pat. So Clayton, Taylor is here. The Swifties are at the theaters. Opening weekend of Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour, the movie. And we are about to see how big this actually got. So Clayton, could you give us a Taylor Swift plow for the Taylor Swift weekend of Taylor Swift, October 13th, Taylor Swift, 2023. Number one, Taylor Swift, the heiress tour made $97 million in its first weekend. Number two, the exorcist believer made $11 million down 58%. It added 21 theaters. It's at $44.9 million in its second weekend. Number three, Paw Patrol, the mighty movie, made $7 million, down 38%. It lost 320 theaters. It's at $49.8 million in its third weekend. Number four, Saw X made $5.7 million, down only 27%. It hemorrhaged 204 theaters. It's at 41.4 in its third weekend. Number five, The Creator made $4.3 million, down 31%. Talk about hemorrhaging 720 theaters lost. It's at $32.4 million in its third weekend. And that's your top five. But quickly, number Mm -hmm. six, A Haunting in Venice, $2 million down 24%. This thing's at 38.9 in its fifth weekend. It jumped over the nun. Which is very interesting because you would think the nun would continue to succeed over Haunting in Venice. But you know what? Spooky season. Yeah. Well, I mean, the nun should be spooky season too. I think it's there's probably more direct competition for the spookiness uh of Saw X and and the Exorcist movie probably take away more audience from the nun than they do from Haunting in Venice. You know, haunting in Venice, but those those movies are so so deep into their runs at this point. It's hard yeah. to even understand how people are making their decisions on why they would see either one of these movies. Like right you're now. wading through a line of you know, uh, want to be o girls, want to be o boys, want to be o people, people dressed in their finest eras of Swift. Uh, Swifty recording, you know, eras mm-hmm. or whatever. And uh, they're like, I got to get to Venice. I got to see Death in Venice. Tina Fey, I need to see the new Tina Fey movie. Right, who are right. these people, as famous comic would say, who I cannot imitate because I am on strike? You, you cannot. Yeah, you're, you're, you are a member of SAG and Bad Standing, so you cannot do impressions right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's hard to say why anyone is seeing either the nun or Haunting in Venice this weekend. But yeah, Haunting in Venice, little jump. It's still a bomb. There's still no way there will be a fourth one of these Perot Can I Finish movies from Kenneth Branagh in theaters. Maybe it'll be a streaming series in, in two years. That's possible. Yeah, The creator at number five, that's going to be... I mean, let's get on PVOD Watch, or I guess Hulu Watch. Is the creator on a streaming service by... Halloween. Uh, not uh, that's a great question. Is it on Hulu by Halloween? A uh, Halloween, as it's called, is I mean, uh, that's a great question. I mean, it's definitely on PVOD, and the next few. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if next week it's on PVOD. It could also mm-hmm. be on PVOD right now, and I just don't know. I don't think it is, but I think the creator is going to be on PVOD very soon, and they should because whatever memory people have of those tv commercials you might as well it's not going to be used to get them in the theater at this point so you might as well Mm -hmm. try and get people to drop 20 bucks next week on pvod for the creator i mean kind of the same thing with something like dumb money honestly from sony pictures i mean they're sony movies are netflix play so dumb money is going to be here's my prediction that's going to be a giant Netflix movie for like two weeks at some point. Sony will put dumb money on Netflix. 
And I think a lot of people would be like, oh, what is this Netflix original movie I've never heard of mm -hmm. with a bunch of famous people? Yeah. Um, so, you know, looking at, we're, we're going to get to Taylor in a second, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. Um, Saw X at number four made 5.7 its third weekend. A 27% drop is so, so great, I That's would so say. Good. For a 10th movie in a horror franchise in its third weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, Clayton, do you think that the reviews are really starting to pay off? That this movie, the best reviews of the Saw franchise since the first one. Is that a reason why this is now holding so well in its third weekend? It's the horror movie people want to see until Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes. Yeah. This movie's going to hold very strong until Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. Because um, The Exorcist dropped 50-something. It dropped uh, 58. It probably, Monday, when we uh, when the actuals are in, this thing's going to be in the 60s probably for its drop. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's just going to go from there. Nobody's going to... Uh, this movie is just... A, it is a punchline. It is a goof. People are not showing clips of the scariest parts of this movie. They're not taking pictures of people vomiting like Terrifier 2. They are taking out of context, you know, moments in these this movie and sharing it and snickering. That's what they're yeah. doing. And and if if the if the clip from your horror movie is eliciting guffaws and laughter, that is a that is a uh, failure. Yeah, I mean, uh, there there's a, an Ellen Burstyn clip that's going around, and it's one of those things where. Everyone is uniting to make fun of this clip from Exorcist mm -hmm. Believer. There's not a side that is defending it as saying, oh, you're taking this out of context. You're, you know, you're missing the message. Everyone is making fun of this Ellen Burstyn Exorcist Believer clip. And like you said, that's not the kind of viral buzz you want for a October Halloween movie. This is not Terrifier 2, people vomiting in the crowd because the movie was so scary and so disgusting yeah. in a good way that this is the opposite of that. So Exorcist believer, it didn't drop as much as it could have, but Pat, it opens. So it opens. So it opens. So no, the you're start, right. I mean, it still dropped 58%, which is normal for a horror movie. But again, you and other people were expecting this thing to open in the forties and it did not do that. No, 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 no. This, this movie is going to just keep dropping. And I was at New York comic-con this weekend mm -hmm. for work, not as a spectator. No, of course. And not. I have to say I was gobsmacked by the amount of five night at Freddy's advertising that was, just covering the Javits Center this weekend. Mm -hmm. That was the movie that was being heavily pushed. And we're hearing good buzz on it. The early tracking on this movie is good. 40 to 60. And that's a day and day theatrical and Peacock release. But I think we're both starting to feel now that is going to be a huge Halloween weekend movie. What and did it, I say, Pat? What did, what did I say? You, what did I say? said that five nights at freddy's even as a day and date release on peacock will make more in its opening weekend than the exorcist and make more in its whole run than mm -hmm. the exorcist will make and that is going to be proven true and i said that before the tracking you did you did um it's that's going to be that's going to be a big movie that feels like a youth centric movie in a way that it's horror and a was... video game video game ip huge right 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 and it's got that Chuck E. cheese type restaurant uh setting that i think has carried through generation after generation you know everyone has been to a place like what is being depicted in that movie as a kid so it's also got nostalgia factor that yeah no i agree what when I walked into the Javits Center this weekend in New York City and saw those Five Nights at Freddy's signs, posters, billboards, character statues everywhere, it really hit me 
this thing is going to be big. And, yes. and the studio wants it to be big because that's universal. They want everyone to forget about what just happened with Exorcist Believer. So it's yes. even more imperative to make Five Nights at Freddy's a big deal to just get everyone past Exorcist Believer. Pretend it didn't happen. This Halloween was always about Five Night Freddy's. It was never yeah. about Ellen Burstyn. No, no. And you yeah. know, and uh, like you said, and we'll get to Taylor. We have to, but we're going to get. You know, Taylor's you mentioning and invoking Chuck E. Cheese. I mean, it brings up a uh, dramatic, traumatic, and I'd say mm -hmm. dramatic thing that happened to me when I was a child. I went to a Chuck E. Cheese, and the gentleman, probably a teenager, dressed like Chuck E. Cheese, mm -hmm. went to give me a hug, stuck his gray mitt thumb right in my eye socket. Uh, it hurt really bad. I, to this day, can feel it still, mm -hmm. uh, phantom pain. And I cried and I wow. cried and I was very young. And that is a formative trauma in my life. And you know what? I'll see this movie to revisit it because I ain't afraid yep. of it. I'm going to go straight towards it. I think that's going to be huge for a lot of people is trauma that they suffered at a Chuck E. Cheese or as you Put it. Did you go to a Chuck E. Cheese or a Chunky Cheese? Because you, you it was a offshoot. It was. Uh, I'm sure it was closed down. But um, in Pennsylvania, we had Chunky Cheese, which was a sort of knockoff. He was a rat, and it was uh, probably shut down for various reasons. Probably for copyright, uh, and also for um, I'm sure there was a lot of stuff going on that the um, you know, the well, FBI was looking uh, into. Yeah, well, I mean FBI, and then you know the the FDA, I, you know, I'm right. sure there was not sanitary conditions there. I mean, your mascots are rat. So yes. Um, gray thumb in the eye. And if there's horrors like that in this movie, sign me up. Yeah. Um, so that, I think that's going to be a big movie. And I think that's going to do a lot to just make all of us forget that Exodus believer ever existed. Exodus believer will probably be on Peacock by the time five nights at Freddy's drops in theaters and on Peacock. I think yes. they are going to turn this around uh, onto your TV screens very quickly. Paw Patrol, Mighty Movie. Come on, not really. talk about Paw Patrol here. I mean, it's holding I did mention, really well. Taylor Swift, I, Taylor, Swift, Taylor, Swift Taylor, Taylor Swift. We're going to talk. I did Taylor mention Swift a rat. Minute. So yes, rats need their cheese. I mean, we both said this was going to be the top five. We both nailed it. We both Everything it, just yeah. moved down, got out of the way. Bowed down to yep. Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. Yep. Bowed down. All the puppies bowed down. The two so, twins, Exorcist, bowed down. Yep. Uh, I, you know, saw I, bowed saw, down. Yeah, saw thought I, about for a second. Saw thought. Can I get her in a trap? And yep. I think he he looked at her because saw punishes those who do wrong. And I think. I think Jigsaw Killer, he said, you know what? Taylor Swift hasn't done a goddamn thing wrong in her life. Yeah. So she doesn't need to be taught a lesson. She doesn't go in a trap. The he creator down. fell down. The creator tried to bow and fell on its face. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The creator like fell in a crater. Doofus. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about her. Number one at the box office. And we're recording this on Sunday night. So the Monday actuals may tell a slightly different story. But right now, it looks like Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour of the movie, is going to break the record for the biggest October opening weekend of all time, topping 2019's Joker. So yes. that is that is where we're currently at. You know, the, And that was what, 93? Yeah, that was 93 Joker. and and Taylor Swift. Million? Yep. And Taylor Swift is at 97 according to the numbers. Deadline has it a little lower right now, but it does look like it's going to get over the Joker number. And let's right off the bat, I think we've got to calm the masses. Mhm. Mm yes. Because yes. there was a lot of of information out there regarding the pre-sales for this movie this was a very unique release in that mm -hmm. it was not a studio putting it out not it a was studio. done in conjunction with amc yeah and this movie was more heavily pre-sale tickets bought than pretty much any other big movie of all time 
Yes. You know, in terms of the percentage of tickets sold that were pre-sales as opposed to, you know, walk up numbers. Yes. Um, so one thing to throw out there is, and on this show, we mentioned it, that the word was that there was already a hundred million dollars worth of tickets sold in pre-sales. Mm-hmm. Scott Mendelson has been doing yeoman's work on social media today stating that that was an a worldwide number that mm-hmm. pre-sale number so that's the first thing and the other thing is that was never a fully locked down number you know because amc put that out there and i think at some point amc was estimating that would be the pre-sale number yes um so which is all to say clayton is this movie not opening to 100 million a disappointment considering that a few days ago People had the idea that that including us that it already sold a hundred million dollars worth of tickets. So is this a disappointment that that number wasn't true, and that actually this is coming in around ninety seven million domestic? No, uh, this is not no. a disappointment. Not. I mean, we all went cocoa bananas with our numbers, right? Because yes, this was a rare bird. We had not seen it before we didn't know how much walk up there would be. There's, there's factors. I mean, we went out on a limb and gave numbers. Yes. A lot of people in the industry didn't. And a lot of people in the industry don't because they're afraid of being wrong. Right. Right. We're not afraid of being wrong. Right. Right. When reality doesn't match up with our expectations, do we get upset? No, no. Any way you slice it, even if she doesn't defeat Joker. I mean, Joker, we've said, biggest star going. Next Other to than Leo. Leo. Yep. Biggest star going right now is Joker. And if you get close to sniffing Joker or you surpass Joker, you're doing something right. Yes. Okay. And I think that uh, we're going to see what this movie is going to make going forward. Uh, I know that there's talk of maybe making this something that goes uh, in the weekdays. We can watch it on the weekdays, which is not something that's been happening now. So that could pad the stats a little bit, Uh, not for the opening weekend, but for its long haul. The question, of course, is going to be who goes next weekend. Me and you are going to go next weekend in separate groups. I was not invited into your group, so I had to cobble together a, a group to make myself not look like a creep. Mm-hmm. And I successfully did that. So congratulations. I'm, thank you. I it was you touch That's earnest. for a little bit. That's earnest. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that you are able to to cobble a group together that will keep you from being a creep. I that's, found a that's buffer. Big news. I right. found a buffer. And so we're gonna see it. And so there are people that are gonna see it next weekend. So yep. th- we know for sure that there's at least what 10 people I could say that right. are gonna see it. Uh, in that in this group. So uh, I do think there's going to be some next weekend. But if 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 you're looking at 130, 150, 170 as what it should have made and now it made in the 90s and that's a failure, that is, I think, patently ridiculous. I think we were all yeah. dreaming big and we hoped for it. But if we didn't get it, we weren't like, oh, that's right. a disaster because this isn't a tenant situation. This isn't a, a movie with any sort of pedigree to it that you could look at and say, well, if it doesn't do this, then it's a failure because it's unprecedented. Right. I mean, this is a movie that up until a couple of months ago didn't exist. wasn't going to exist on the box <laughs> yeah. office schedule. And it just dropped in from the sky and has made 97 million domestic. Yes. And it's a movie that, I mean, budget wise, this is a, a giant success. It's, she was already doing this tour and they set a mm-hmm. couple of cameras up and it, you know, reportedly the budget on this was around 20 million or so. And, mm-hmm. and you know, the marketing pretty much was social media and showing up in NFL sky boxes yes. with a mom, you know, this yeah. was not a movie where they spent 50 million on marketing and yeah. bought tons and tons of TV ads. Every this was grassroots. You know, she's the biggest star on the planet. So as much as a, the biggest star on the planet could do a grassroots campaign, but that's what this was. You know, the awareness from this movie came from 
her existence out there, you know, not mm-hmm. so much from bought TV commercials. So this is a success in terms of how it could have been bigger or should it have been bigger? The thing with this movie is she's the most popular artist in the world right now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there, there's comparisons of, is she bigger now than Michael Jackson was at his peak? Yeah. And I think that's that's the comparison. That's how big Taylor Swift is. But the ceiling for a Taylor Swift concert movie is still going to come down to who wants to go listen to Taylor Swift music for two and a half hours. Unlike a movie yeah. where if you want to see a movie, the ceiling is movie fans. And I think the ceiling for a concert film is lower than just the ceiling for a movie. Yeah. Cause when we talk about say like, for example, a saw X, we're seeing the word of mouth make this movie uh, continue to succeed in a way that you have people who wouldn't normally see a Saw movie seeing this movie. But I don't think that's comparable to Taylor Swift because you either like her music or you don't. I I do think, I mean, maybe she'll have some new fans from this. I mean, I guess it's possible, but right. You know, it's a different sort of thing. Like it's also just a concert movie. And if you don't want to sit and listen to music in a theater, then you're not going to do it. Even if you're like, well, this is the best one ever. It's like, well, I don't go see concert films, but a Saw movie that gets really good reviews has the possibility to unlock a new sort of group of people where a concert film in general just won't do that. Yeah. Well, I think where this Taylor Swift opening weekend could entice more people is just was this a good time at the theater? Was this a type Mm -hmm. of thing I want to participate in? And going back to the creep aspect, is this the type of situation that legally I should put myself in? And, you know, the, the, the videos that you're seeing coming out of this opening weekend of Taylor Swift, the era store, the movie is a lot of dancing in the theaters, a lot Mm -hmm. of young women, teenage girls, sometimes adolescent children, getting up, dancing, dancing through the aisles, moving around. And it looks like a great time. So that could be the type of thing that those videos entice other people to want to be a part of that, other young women. But it could also give some pause to people who look at those videos and say, you know what? I shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. In a way that, you know, most people don't think about that in general, seeing a movie, they don't think, Hey, is this the type of thing I should be photographed being around? Mm -hmm. You know, should I have teenage girls dancing around me Yeah, and that possibly getting on TikTok? So, but I think, I think overall those type of videos, I mean, what do you think, Lane? I think the, the party atmosphere of the opening weekend of this movie is actually going to help it a lot next weekend. It gives it a sort of uh, hey, you got to be a part of this thing. And it, and it, maybe it's like people want to do that again next weekend. Like any blockbuster, this depends on people sort of outside of the normal group of moviegoers going to see a movie. Also, repeat viewings. I mean, the reason mm-hmm. why Marvel movies did so well when they did well was repeat viewings. Mm-hmm. The reason Joker did so well was because people went back to see the dance down those stairs. Yep. They went to see Mark Marin. They went to see De Niro. No, they didn't. They went to see Joker, right? Yeah. I was being facetious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And will this be, I saw it once, I'm seeing it again with the same group of people or a new group of, of people, right? So it's going to be the repeat viewers that are going to make this a true, you know, huge phenomenon, which it already is, but make it have legs, which is what good blockbusters have, you Mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. something like Avatar. I need to, I want to live in that world. I want to visit it as much as I possibly can on the biggest screen that I Mm -hmm. possibly can. So I'm going to go back and back and back and back. You need that to truly make this like a huge, huge movie. But 
if this movie was only here for this weekend and only made this amount of money, it would still be an amazing success. Mm -hmm. That is what Mm -hmm. has to be remembered because you said it. You nailed it. We're the B.O. boys. We talk about theatrical. That is almost a hundred million dollars that theaters did not have three months ago. And now it has it. Yeah. 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 It's it's this is nothing but a giant success for for the movie business for Taylor Swift. And, you know, I don't know. It's interesting to think of this opening weekend in terms of her movie stardom because anyone headlines a movie a young star headlining a movie that does 97 million dollars with their name above the title normally we would say we have just crowned a new young movie star and obviously taylor swift is just a as big of a planetary pop culture entertainment star as there is but does this make her a movie star you know does taylor swift now acting in a movie you know she's acted in movies before she was in yes. amsterdam a year ago but after this opening valentine's weekend, day i believe was that the one valentine's she was in or, new year, or new year's eve she's been in yes one of those gary marshall movies she hasn't as far as i remember been the lead in a movie and now she has this. She opens a movie to ninety-seven million. Does this mean that Taylor Swift acting in a movie is is a big deal? I mean, obviously, well, it was always a big deal because she was famous. But is she a movie star? Is she a draw coming out of this, or is this an aberration because it's her doing her music? Yeah, it's her doing the thing that she does. Like I, I do think that she, even if she does make a movie which searchlight pictures announced in december 2022 that swift would direct uh, a future length film from a screenplay she wrote herself now will she Mm -hmm. be in it who knows but will that succeed because this succeeded no i mean it's not a one-to-one i think even if you put her in a starring role in a movie next time this year Right. And it is a narrative film and it is not a music film. It's not, it won't even come close to this. I mean, no, unless it it's come- an IP, unless it's an IP that we're all, you know, clamoring for. I, I don't think this makes her more bankable as an actor. No, that's See, answering the question. I, I disagree with, uh, I, I think it makes her more bankable. Obviously, this doesn't mean that. How much more bankable, though? I think. Oh, I think. It, I think. I think more bankable. I think there is something to getting people to have gone into a movie theater to see Taylor Swift. That sense memory, and again, this is her doing the thing people want to see her do, which is play her Taylor Swift songs, do that concert. But the right movie, the the right director, she, I think, is more bankable in a movie today than she was well of course she is but by what margin i mean of course yes if you're saying full stop is she more bankable now than she was yes it's a matter of degrees i don't think it's much much more but it's definitely more you're saying it's much much more i think if she wants to act and who knows if she does i mean the, the she she has yet to be in anything where where she's gotten amazing critical notices for her acting yet she was but if cats she, if that? she does want to act i think that she is more bankable as a lead now where up until now she's mainly just been in ensemble parts and i do think a studio is going to want to take and it's you know it's not taking a chance it's getting her to agree to do it uh, i think it makes sense for a studio to try and get her to be the lead in a movie in the next year because People people paid, bought a lot of tickets this weekend to see her be in a movie theater. You got to try and capitalize on that with something else. But if she can do a concert that, film every year. Is she past that phase? Because she did try to act. And of course, yeah, she didn't lead a movie like lead, lead a movie. You know, she never had her desperately seeking Susan or, right. you know. Uh, or, or her star is born. Yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, you know, if, if she goes the Gaga route, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's that's tough to say. I mean, I don't know if she has interest in becoming a movie star, truly. I think she probably is more interested in directing right, right, and writing right. a film, right. you know, and maybe being in it in order to get it made. But I don't think that she's aiming to be a, a, a movie star now. I hate to say this because I don't want to be inundated with, you know, moron, you're a moron, whatever. I don't think the Swifties roll that way. But, you know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Is she starring in this movie? Does she want to be a movie star? Or, you know, does she want to do more like I write and I direct and that's my thing? And right, I'm right. only in it for like a she does the M. Night Shyamalan where she plays you know, the songwriter that's going to save the world in a couple scenes or, you right. know, or she plays that sort of thing. Yeah. Is it a Hitchcock? Is she a Hitchcock or an M night? And she right, only right. shows up to be like, Hey, it's me for a second. Right. Um, yeah. I I'm curious. I obviously, she is someone who, uh, takes very careful care about her career how she presents herself, you know, every aspect of it is, is, is she is the manager of everything. So acting is the type of thing where you really do have to give yourself over to other people. You know, that the auteur of a movie is usually not the actor in the movie. So mm -hmm. who knows if she wants to put herself in that position. So, but I, I do think, this movie opened to 97 million. Again, I realize it is a unique thing and that it's a concert film, but it makes sense for her and for the movie business to try and capitalize on this by getting Taylor Swift to headline another movie in the next couple of years. It's just, you, you, you got to take that shot. And I think the audience is there. And I think she has created more fans who are willing to, to pay to see her in a movie theater than there were, you know, a year ago when she was in Amsterdam. Now, Pat, I know we did not plan this mm -hmm. and this may be a curveball. Okay. But all of this talk, you know, we're talking hypotheticals, future, yep, whatever. Yep. Let's talk about this. Now this okay. $97 million. Okay. Do we do one of our big <gasps> patented, you know wow. where I'm going here. Segments here. Oh my that god. That only we do. That only we do. Yes. Do we Trademark. divvy up the millions Let's on the it. opening of Taylor Swift the Eras tour? I mean, let's do it. So for the listeners who never heard this before, we take an important number. Sometimes it's the lifetime gross of a movie, sometimes it's, you know, uh when it hits a milestone and we divvy up who or what aspects of the movie deserve credit for that movie's success. So yes, we'll go with $97 million is the number opening weekend of this movie. I mean, here's the thing. You're the one who brought it up. I'm curious. What do you think are the other people or aspects of this movie that deserve credit beyond Taylor Swift? Yeah. You I know, mean, that's the question because this was a, you know, pretty much self-made movie. Right. Like we we did this for Barbenheimer. I think might have been the last time we've done this. And obviously yeah. with Barbenheimer, there's Greta Gerwig and there's the Barbie IP and there's mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan and Dan, you know, there's all these different factors. Yeah. What brought the butts to the seats? Right. What right. was the thing that made people see this movie? So that is what we're talking about. It's not like these people put up this money. So some dentist in, you know, uh, in, in Beverly Hills gets uh, credit because nobody's going to be like, I went and saw this movie because a uh, dentist in Beverly Hills gave somebody some money. That's yeah. just an example. OK, right? so then let's start out there with what's possible. Who deserves credit for this opening weekend? So it's Taylor so, Swift. Taylor Swift. Right. I mean, do we bring in, you know. All of this NFL stuff, okay? Travis Kelsey, Donna Ooh. Kelsey. More Donna Kelsey than Travis Kelsey, honestly, because she spent more time with the mom than anybody else. Uh, I okay, think the that... big question is, mm -hmm. does Taylor get everything or does, does Donna get a taste? Does Donna get a taste of this uh, money? Okay. Were there people who were like, 
I won't see this movie. I don't. And then she sees a, a mom hug and she says, they say, I'm going to see this movie. Is there anybody in the country who's doing that? All right. So, so I think we're in agreement that we're not going to give tra- uh, Travis Kelsey any of this. It is Donna Kelsey. It's Donna who, Kelsey. Who could get some percent. Okay. So it's Taylor Swift. It's Donna Kelsey. Um, the Swifties. As a and this would be the first time that we're counting the ticket buyers as one of the reasons that the movie was successful. Do are the they Swifties... mobilizing people? Are they right. taking people? Are they recruiting people? Right. Are is the Swifty Army recruiting people and grabbing people off the street and saying? Come to this. Come to this. Yeah. So the Swifties, I think, are an entity that could get a percentage of this box office. Um, but are they a detraction? Are there people who are going to this move, going to the, not going to this movie because they want to avoid the Swifties? Listen, I'm not going to say either way, but it's a possibility, right? All right. So does so, a rabid fan base detract instead right. of attract? All right, so we'll factor that in. So it's the Swifties. Do you have any other people or factors that could get some of this opening weekend? Because it is, it is, and let's break this up. You're, you are a Swiftie. You know, you're more of no, a no, no. Taylor Swift no, no, movie no. fan. No, 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 no. I'm no. going to, this is, I just want to say. No. I am not a, I am, I have seen what Swifties are in the run up to this and the release. Okay. I if I was a Swifty, I would have seen this movie already. I am a fan of Taylor Swift's music. Okay. That's what I am. I'm not saying I'm a Swifty because that would be stolen valor. Okay. I haven't put my money where my mouth is. I haven't walked the walk. So I'm not going to steal the valor. I'm okay. not going to say I'm a Swifty. I will say more so than you are, I'm a fan of her music. Okay, so as a fan of Taylor Swift, as someone who knows the eras, I know the catalog, we, I know the eras. Do we break Taylor Swift herself up into different eras? Is there an era in particular that is more meaningful to this opening weekend box office than another era? Is there a Whoa. main era of Taylor Swift that deserves more credit for this 97 million? Pat, that is such an awesome question. So yes, you know what it is. Okay. So here's, here's, here's what, and this is, it should, you know, I wish we had an actual Swifty on the show to, to, to talk about this and maybe, you know, this can start a debate. Um, but so here's the people that we can give money to Taylor Swift, but split into eras. Okay. Donna Kelsey. Right. The Swifties. Those are the options of who gets what, right. Just to lay it out. Okay. And and I'll throw one more out there. Do we give any of this to AMC itself no. for making this deal? So a- Adam Aaron, he's listen. These these. I mean, who's going to turn this deal down? Who who's going to say no? We don't want this. So so you're saying on this episode where a lot of Swifties are listening, we don't want to give some of the opening weekend credit to. Adam Aaron, CEO of AMC, who currently uh, in a in a explicit photos extortion uh, situation, we don't want to give him some of Taylor Swift's money. I would I would say no. He's being because... extorted for sharing explicit photos. You don't think he deserves a percentage of Taylor Swift's opening weekend? Number one, on thoughts and prayers. Obviously, thoughts and prayers. But nobody went to see this movie because AMC is involved. Okay. Uh, AMC facilitated the seeing of this movie, but they are not the driving force as to why people went. Okay. So you don't think that, you know, the news about Adam Aaron's extortion situation broke on Thursday. You don't think that added to the opening weekend at all, where people are like, oh, this guy's in an extortion plot and he's partnering on this taylor swift movie i should go check out the taylor swift movie you don't think that happened for adam i would not think that that would be enough of a driver for it to be anything more than a rounding error when we're talking money okay 
Okay, so Adam Aaron doesn't get any of Taylor Swift's $97 million opening weekend. Although he could use it probably after this. He's being extorted and he's probably, and he may, he may be in trouble for sharing explicit photos. So he could yeah. use every penny that uh, is out there. All right. So then I'm going to have to rely on you as if not oh, a Swifty, as at least a fan of the eras of Taylor Swift. Is there one era that deserves more money than the other eras? I think we don't have to break it up into every era. Well, first of all, how about this? How about this? Taylor Swift overall, what percentage of this 97 million goes to her as opposed to Donna Kelsey and as opposed to the Swifties? Let's just do it 97%. I mean, she gets 97% of this money. Okay. So how much is that? Is that like 94 million? Yeah. Okay. So Taylor yeah. Swift gets 94 out of the 97 million. Which era gets the most? Which uh, okay, era so means the most? This, okay. My favorite of the albums is red. Okay. But I don't think that gets the most. Okay. What I would say. What is, is she dressed like in red? Is she a cowboy in that or? She's got the red lipstick, the, the red lipstick and stuff. God, um, cool. That's kind of when she moved away from country more to being more pop. And then her full pop transformation was 1989. That is the new she's re-recording all of her music mm. to get all the money from it and to take the money from Scooter Braun. And so 1989 is the one that's coming out at the end of this month. OK. And I think that was really her pop crossover. So I would say 1989 is probably the era that should get the most because I think that's the one that really took her to another level as a pop figure. Okay. So 1989 era gets the most. Okay. I think her early country era gets the least. Wow. So early country era Taylor Swift gets very little 1989 Taylor Swift era. She's dressed like what? Is she like in culottes or she's dressed like, like, you she's know, she's just in like, in like dresses and stuff. And, you know, okay. she's very much acoustic guitar and, and Got things it. like that, okay. you know? Okay. So it's not like very she's Nashville, like, she... very Nashville. Okay. Probably so not like the boots, not like Motley Crue, uh, uh, retro 1989. She doesn't go full late eighties wear. Oh wait, you're asking what she's era. dressed like? No, she, you're asking what she dressed like in nineteen eight the nineteen eighty nine era. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I thought you were talking about the early country era. No, 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 the nineteen eighty nine okay. era. What is she? What is she dressed like? What does that Taylor Swift era look like? Oh, uh, that album came out in like oh god mid two thousand. So she's pretty like just current. Like, okay, you know she's that's what I was asking. Know, wearing she doesn't current dress like the eighties. Okay, got it. Okay, so yeah. 1989 era Taylor Swift, do you think then gets like 90 million out of the 97 million? No, not that much, but I do think it, I think that that probably gets 60 to 70. So okay. let's say 65. So that gets 65. The other eras then get. And I think this current midnight era. Uh huh. It gets a good amount too, because this, this one was, she came back from doing the acoustic albums where she's wearing a cardigan and stuff uh, over the mm-hmm. pandemic, you know, uh, where, you know, she's, she's, she's doing stuff with the, the, the guys from the national and Bonnie Vare, and that's mm-hmm. was popular, but then midnight was like her doing super poppy stuff again. And that really shot her back up. So I think midnight gets a lot. Of okay. Credit as well as an era. So then, 1989 Taylor Swift gets 65 million. Yeah. Midnight Taylor Swift gets 20 million. I'd say 20 million. Yeah. And then all other eras of Taylor Swift split about 12 million. Yeah, but I would say her early country stuff gets less, just because she doesn't Different. really play that stuff anymore. She's more of a pop figure. She does play those songs, but I don't think that's the driving force. I don't think the you know cassette buying audience is going to see this movie got it got it okay so that's 97 million for taylor swift and then here's one we forgot does jake gyllenhaal get anything as as sort of like the most famous of her exes he doesn't get anything i mean he was no, a movie he's actor. he's he you said it he's a movie yeah, actor yeah. not a movie star 
Okay, yeah, so then yeah. So then two million dollars to be divided up amongst uh uh Donna Kelsey, who Taylor Swift has hung out with in the in the skybox for the last month. Um, and then the Swifties themselves. I mean, I think Donna Kelsey is is kind of the whole marketing campaign she, yes. of this movie. The the marketing has been on her shoulders, you know, as has been Taylor Swift's arms. I do think she is the thing that's getting the, you know, mature women into this because they're like, look, Taylor Swift is treating this mom like a mom should be treated. And yeah. moms like that. Moms like to be treated the way moms should be treated, which they should be cherished, obviously. And so I do think that that brought some people to this movie more so than the Swifties, which I do think can be very intense. And I am a, you know, listen, intensity is good, but they could be very intense. So I, I, I don't think they are driving people to come in a way that somebody like a, a mother can. Okay. So how about the, this? the, the welcoming arms of a mom? How about this then? Even so, if her son is sort of a cheesy doofus. Sorry. So so there's two million left. What if we give one million nine hundred and eighty nine thousand to Donna Kelsey? Okay. That nineteen eighty nine, and then okay. that would leave uh one hundred and eleven thousand for the Swifties. They would you get one hundred and eleven thousand. Since 13 is Taylor Swift's favorite number, we should give them $13 to split amongst them, the Swifties. Because they like how all the, that doesn't get us all the way. Then we'd have to come up with money to give to someone else. No, give the rest to Donna. Give, give Donna, Donna everything except for $13 and okay. give the $13 to the Swifties. Okay, so the Swifties get $13. Donna Kelsey gets whatever that other amount is Taylor well, that's Swift up to you a, to do it. Taylor Swift gets a 97 million and of that 97 million, 65 million goes to 19. Well, no, no, no. She gets 94 up. Pat, because we gave her 97% oh, right. of 97. Right. She gets 94. Anyway, that's us splitting up the millions. At this no, point. this is our most inaccurate splitting up of the millions because what did you this just was your idea. You, this? You, 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 you're the one you who does the tracking of the math. You threw it I, on us. You threw it on us. I was not I prepared it on for us, us to do this. You got you so excited. Take a more leadership. You need to take a more leadership stake in this once you suggested okay. it. Here's, here's what I'm going to say. And okay. we'll stop after this because yeah. it's late. Yeah. But when we divvy up the millions, when I mentioned that, when you got so excited. Out meticulously Stop normally, it. yeah. That's why you have to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Everybody, look at the film. When I mentioned this, you were like, yes, yes, let's do it. That wasn't a person who was over barrel who said, oh, I guess. But if I have to remember numbers, then I'm not doing it. That was an excited individual who gave up halfway through because the math got hard and you know, I'm not the math guy, you know it. And I, when we then do this, it's you not do the your math. place to interject a math segment then in here. If, if, if your math skills are so poor, I'm sorry that your meticulous plan was destroyed by a, by $13, Pat. I think the audience, you know, here's the thing. They can do it themselves. We gave it to them, but they shouldn't have to do it themselves. We should have done it for them. And by, us we should have never we, we i mean have planned you. this out we should have planned this out like we know all right well do. you know sometimes surprises happen sometimes all of a sudden there's thursday previews when there weren't and there's weekday showings possibly so uh, this whole run of this movie is full of surprises you should have been ready for it pat you should have been ready so that is everything for this week i yeah. mean an incredible incredible opening weekend for Taylor Swift, the Eras tour of the movie. Very excited to see what it does next weekend. And next weekend, it's going to have some competition from a big Leo movie. Killers of the mm. Flower Moon, Leo, Scorsese. It's coming out next weekend, going head to head with Taylor Swift. I mean, next weekend's prediction is going to be very interesting because 
is is Taylor guaranteed another number one? You know, the drop on this movie is going to be very debatable. Oh, and yeah. the Leo Does it fall opening, off a cliff? Who knows? Right. So that is going to be a fascinating episode next week. So our weekend preview episode will probably go up like it usually does on Thursday morning. So look for that. That's going to be huge. And of course, give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Do and it. do it, do it. Follow us on social media at the BO Boys Pod across all social media, Twitter X and TikTok, Wannabe O, Senior Intern Christopher, killing it with the vertical videos there. Email us, the BO Boys Podcast at gmail.com. We want to get your predictions. Let us know how you would have dippied up these millions. And you'll have the mm-hmm. time to sit down, think about it, do the math, and then send us an email because, you know, Clayton won't be just springing it on you. We've we've now given you time to prepare for the segment. So email us, the BO Boys podcast at gmail.com, how you would divvy up this opening $97 million weekend for Taylor Swift. And I think that's it, Clayton. I think we've done it. I don't think there's anything left to say, Pat. Except for until next time. Will we'll smell you at the, the box of fish. Nailed it. Nailed it.